Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode two of Pokemon Crystal. In the last uh, Crystal, jeez, I'm way too used to saying that. The Pokemon Yellow, sorry. In the last part, we started the game and got up to the Viridian Forest here. And in this part, we're going to be continuing onwards towards the next gym, the first gym leader, and onward from there. Now, Brittany City here, only you can really only encounter a few, a few select Pokemon here, uh, Weedle, Caterpie, and their evolutions, Metapod and Meta... and, uh, Kakuna. I, from what I remember, there may be a slight chance of encountering the third evolutions, but that's really it. There's also a very, very low encounter rate for Pikachus here in Red, Blue, and, uh, Fire Red, Leaf Green. But it's some years school that it takes... it can take hours to find it, even though for some reason I... I'm pretty much blessed with finding them in, uh, Fire Red. Yeah, that's one thing I don't like about the first gen, is the music transitions take a bit longer than they should. Because in, uh, from what I remember in Gen 2 at least, uh, once you ended the battle, the, mu the music immediately switched over, which doesn't happen in this version for some reason. Anyway, welcome to Pewter City, with an appropriate color change, mind you. And that is the game doing it, and I, I, I didn't switch emulators to a Game Boy Monochrome or anything. Now, you ha now you have to beat the gym here before you can progress onwards. It, it's actually physically that impossible to pass on without hacking. The guy, the, 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 a guy will interrupt you from walking to the right and bring you over to the gym, actually. Uh, light years from facing Brock, he's four feet in front of me. Let, uh, he actually realizes after you beat him in the after battle text that uh, light years are uh, measure of distance instead of time. And now for one of my favorite boss uh, gym leader themes in the series, I love this theme so much. Although I think Gen 5's is my favorite gym battle theme overall. Anyway, as you can see, even though Rocky took a bit of damage, uh, Rock. Rock, yes. Brock is a user of rock and ground type Pokemon, which is a huge disadvantage for yellow, because they are, because rock types, I think, are, I don't think they're immune, they may be, but they're not, but electric type attacks are not very effective against them, and ground types nullify electric attacks overall. <coughs> luckily, if you, luckily since I got a Mankey, because I'm smart enough to do that, uh, it, it's not that low and use low kick. It's not that hard. Now I mentioned last part that uh, yet that there was a red and green in Japan, then a blue, which we got as red and blue here in America. Then this, the major differences be between all the versions, besides in obviously encounters and uh, bug fixes, is that uh, they switch. They made they eh, redid the sprites for all the Pokemon. It. It's more obvious with the back sprites, because some of the back sprites just look... Bleh. In fact, uh, the original red and green sprites were... Terrible. You Like, remember Vaporeon that I used in Crystal? It's back sprite in the original red and green. You couldn't even tell what the hell it was. Although I do love Charizard sprite. Uh, it looks like a stereotypical dragon. And actually, another reference to the anime they make here is that Brock wants to be a Pokemon breeder instead of just a gym leader. Which they brought up in the anime, but... And that also brings up another good point. I wish they could have made Brock and Misty, who we'll meet in the next part, follow you like they did in the anime, because that'd just be awesome, having like five sprites on screen at once. Yeah, I check Pikachu's mood every so often, because uh, that mood is actually kind of important. Because but you can't get certain story-related Pokemon without its happiness being maxed. And of course, Rocky faints right in front of this guy. Ugh, I hate the poison status so much. Especially when I did my first Nuzlocke run. Good god, I lost so many Pokemon to poison. Eek, did you touch me? What? You walked up to me! 
some of the dialogue makes no sense. In fact, uh, earlier in this ride, I didn't comment on it, but there's a guy that says, Shorts are nice and comfy. That guy actually, I actually mentioned that guy in, when I was in Pewter City in Crystal, which was a nice continuity thing, is that some of the trainers do say some of the stuff they said in the, the original generation. Or at least make references to it. I know Shorts guy comes back, I don't know who else does. And welcome to the first, beside the, to the second dungeon in the game, to the, well, technically speaking, it's the first real dungeon. Uh, Viridian Forest was just an introductory. Welcome to Mount Moon. Good god, this place is annoying. And for some reason, in the caves, I seem to find that the encounter rate is a lot higher. You'll be hearing, you'll be seeing me, you'll be hearing the music restart a lot if you can hear it under, over my voice. And I actually kind of got lot, kind of luck got that, nah, nah, kind of got lost in here, Mount Moon. So I actually end up going all the wrong paths until I finally realized that the path I needed to go was just a slightly t below one I'd already gone. In fact, the exit's right down there, really. And who's that? We'll find out who that was later. But then again, if you remember their sprite from Gen 2, they look should look kind of familiar. It's Team Rock, and I might as well say that right now. Because, uh, I believe, I think Archer, who was the final Rocket executive, mentioned it at some point in, uh, Crystal, but, uh, this is, but they had been beaten by a kid once three years ago, and once, and then, in Crystal. This is three years before Crystal, where that kid, in fact, we're, but then again, we're also the final boss, so... And we get a rare candy. I don't think I found any... I found maybe one, if any, rare candies in Crystal. They're pretty much an automatic level up. I always use them right when I get them, though. I just check who has the lower po the, the more uh, experience to go. And the reason I didn't even think about getting it to Rocky is because he's not going to be on my team for much longer, really. In fact, uh, that's the only reason I gave it to Pat and or, and or Pikachu is because they're going to be on my team for the entire game. And for some reason that reminded me, even though we haven't done this yet, evolutions, like for they are in Gen 2. Uh, Pikachu evolves when you use a Thunderstone on it normally into Raichu. But this Pikachu, I'm guessing as continuity from the anime or just being lazy, they, made, they gave this one the special property to it that you can't evolve it with any, and I mean any, Thunderstone. It's immune to evolution. And we got an HP up. I, and I, in this game, if I get any stat boosting items, I use them immediately because, uh, I haven't mentioned this yet, but the inventory system in Gen 1 sucks. They fix it in Fire Red Leaf Green to what it was in Gen 2, but here in Gen 1, ugh, it's terrible. It's pretty much, you can hold maybe 20, maybe 30 items at once, which is alright, but... For, I mean, I can understand that. It was the first game. They weren't... They didn't really have the idea at that point, but... Ugh, it just gets on my nerves, because I tend to hoard items, so... What I do in Gen 1 is that pretty much any time I go into a Pokemon Center, I put any items I got that I won't be using anytime soon, like... It, like TMs and or evolution stones right into the PC box. And uh, one and like I mentioned last part, there's only 151 Pokemon in this game, so as I just checked my Pokedex there, since we've seen 23, we've already seen a two fifth two fifteenths of the Pokemon in this game. And it, but actually the 151st Pokemon, Mew, is actually you can't get it unless you get it through an event normally, but there is a way to glitch your way to get it legitly. I forget how you do it in yellow, I won't be actually showing it off in the playthrough because my the psychic type I'll be using is not Mew. I'll say right now it's Kadabra, but... Uh... I will do a bonus episode after the series is completed of Red showing off the Mew glitch. And we're coming up actually on the end of the Mount Moon. Right up here is a super nerd that we have to fight. Who I actually lost to off screen, so I had to backtrack all the way here. And the only reason I don't show him is because he's technically not a major encounter. I don't that's that's my rule of thumb for these playthroughs now. 
I'm only showing off major fights. Like, uh, gym leaders, uh, major fights, and, uh, like, bosses, pretty much. Pat might do it in, uh, when he records Fire Reds, where you only, uh, show encounter, required encounters, but anyway, who are these two, and why do they look so familiar? Surrender now, prepared fight. Prepare for trouble! Make it double! To protect the world from devastation! To unite all peoples within our nation! To denounce the evils of truth and love! To extend our reach to the stars above! Jesse! James! Team Rocket, blast off at the speed of light! Surrender now or prepare to fight! Me! Oh, that's right! Like... No! <laughs> oh, it's these two! This is Jesse and James from the anime. They, they, every now and then, you know, they will show up to give you a fairly easy fight. It's just really references to the anime. They're pretty easy, actually, but why did they bring these guys in? <laughs> Although one little detail I did like is that uh, the team, when you fight them, is what they had at that point in the anime. Like, right now, they only have an Ekans uh, coughing, and they're talking me out. I, actually, that's kind of funny. In the anime, the only reason the Meowth can talk is because it trained itself to, and that makes me wonder why can't Pikachu learn to speak? Because, uh, some people have actually made notes that, uh, Pikachu in the anime has some speech patterns. Where, like, an actual vocabulary to it. Like, pika Pee is Ash. I think pika Pika is the Caterpie. I don't really know the entire thing. I only know that pika Pee is Ash. Which makes me wonder, how much time do people have to notice this stuff? I mean, sure, I have a lot of free time, but that's just because I don't do anything after school. But really, the Jesse and James fights aren't that bad. In, in fact, they're pathetically easy if you're over, if you're if you're fighting every fight you possibly can. I didn't in this, but uh, that's just because I didn't want this to be too long of a video. I will say that probably the levels for everyone will probably... The, everyone's level... I don't have an entire party yet, but by the end of the game, I want everyone to be at level 60 for the final battle. I'll get into why at some point. Also, nice little continuity error there. Error there. They call Red a brat. That's not what they called everyone in the anime. They called them twerps. I'm such a nerd for remembering that. And we're out of Mount Moon. Thank God we never have to go back there. And welcome to the point that I always almost got stuck at in Fire Red Leaf Green. Welcome. Well, once we're there in a couple seconds. Welcome to Cerulean City. Now there's a bit we have to do here, but we're not going to be showing that off until next part. Thank you guys for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And next time... On Pokemon Yellow, we will continue through Cerulean City.